Cellos, Julian Keeling here, Associate Broker with Berkshire Pathway Home Services Town Realty, located right on the coast in beautiful Hampton Roads, Virginia. Welcome to Chapter 115 in my first time home buying series. And today we're going to discuss when are your closing costs due? And be sure to stay tuned to the end as I will have bonus tips on how you can save some money on your closing costs as I'm always presenting you with options and producing results. Let's jump right in. For this video's purpose and to keep it as simple as possible, when I reference closing costs, it's going to mean what is the total amount when everything is said and done that you would need in order to be able to close on a home. This of course would include such things such as your prepaid, taxes, insurance, the whole nine basically. Now these estimates won't include your down payment, but I'll be sure to put a link in the description below for a video that goes over the difference between your down payment and your closing costs. Now that we've defined what your closing costs are, in general, they are going to be due at the time of closing. If you're purchasing with a loan, then I would budget about three to three and a half percent of whatever the sales price is for your closing costs. Keep in mind that if you are purchasing a home and the sales price is 120K or below, then your closing costs as a percentage will actually be a little bit higher. Because the loan amount is smaller, I would recommend budgeting about 5% of whatever the sales price is if you are about 120 thousand or below. Usually at the time of formal loan app, the lender is going to verify that you have enough cash to close. And of course, the bulk of the cash to close is usually made up of your closing costs. I would suggest going ahead and starting to gather any documents that you may need, such as your bank statements or investment accounts, so that you will be able to show the lender where you're getting the funds from. Bonus tip! When you're going through the pre-approval or pre-qualification process, I would suggest asking your lender for a fee sheet. The fee sheet is going to break down all of the required money as well as other important aspects of your loan, such as how much your monthly payment is going to be. If you get a fee sheet from your loan officer upfront, this will help you to know exactly what all of your costs are going to be, including what are your closing costs. Bonus tip two. Did you know that you can ask the seller to contribute to your closing costs? Yes, that is correct. The seller can contribute to all or some of your closing costs. You would either have to pay your closing costs out of pocket or you can ask the seller to pay them or a portion of them for you. Having a fee sheet ahead of time will allow for you to see exactly how much you need to negotiate to ask the seller to pay on your behalf. If the seller is able to and has equity in the home, then they might be willing to help you out with contributing to your closing costs in order to get their home sold. The seller doesn't have to come out of pocket with these costs, but it would be a deduction that they would see to their net proceeds at the time of closing. If you are fortunate enough to be able to utilize cash to purchase your home, you will still need closing costs as well. Now your closing costs won't be not nearly as much as they would be if you are utilizing a loan. However, there are still closing costs even with a cash transaction. With a cash transaction, you're going to probably be closing a lot sooner than you would if you were utilizing a loan. Thus, I would go ahead and budget for the total sales price in addition to however much the closing costs are at the time you make your offer. You're most likely not going to be able to have enough time to procure additional cash for your closing costs. For a cash transaction, I would maybe budget about $1,500 to $2,000 for your closing costs. This will get you the basic things done that are associated with closing, such as your title search, your deed prep, um, surveys, as well as title insurance. The title insurance is going to vary according to whatever the sales price is or what the home is tax assessed for. Be sure to check with your local title rep or attorney to figure out the difference and how this can kind of factor into your closing costs. Title insurance tends to be one of the more expensive components of closing costs. However, it is something that I strongly and highly recommend. Bonus tip two for title insurance. 
if you initially obtain the enhanced version of the title insurance policy at the time of closing, it could save you from in the future having to have another title policy reissued. For example, some of the reasons that you may need to get another policy if you don't have the enhanced one initially is if you decide to refinance the loan or make any changes to title, such as adding a person or deleting someone from title. If you have the enhanced policy, this could save you from having to buy one all over again. I hope that you have enjoyed the content and learned a little something along the way as my goal is to always educate my first time home buyers throughout the home buying process. If so, please give me a thumbs up and comment with yes down below in the description. Also, feel free to share with a friend or family member that you think may find the info helpful and consider subscribing. I will be putting out weekly real estate info videos. Thank you again for watching and I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Bye.